Well, hello, Salem. I'm your mayor, Chuck Bennett. I'm glad to have you here with me uh, again today. Uh, we're going to be talking with uh, uh, representatives from the Rotary Club regarding what has become probably the most common question I get as the parks have been more actively used and reopened, and that's down at Riverfront Park, uh, seeing the new Jerry Frank Rotary Amphitheater uh, down in the uh, southeast corner of the park really coming to fruition. And I thought it'd be a really great chance to get kind of a look at what that amphitheater's about, what it'll be used for, and probably most importantly, how did it get here and how did uh, uh, Ken Van Osdall and Barry Nelson and the uh, members of Rotary come up with this idea. So I'm, uh, this has been uh, an idea you all have been working on for some time. We've been talking about it. Uh, where did it come from? What got you going on an amphitheater? We, we kind of have a small amphitheater. What's the... Yeah, well, it was uh, back in 2015, I was coming to the end of my term as the Rotary Club president. And being a planner, both by nature and by profession, uh, I was looking ahead to uh, the, the centennial of Rotary in the Willamette Valley. Uh, our club having been formed in 1920, I was looking at 2020 and suggested to the club that we do something bigger than usual uh, to celebrate that uh, centennial. You sort of over, overreached. <laughs> this well, is big. Well, it, it's grown. <laughs> it's grown. At, at first, we thought uh, perhaps we could do a, a million dollar project, maybe a million and a half, something of that nature. Mm -hmm. uh, and um, we, we talked with both Rotary leadership as well as leadership within the community. And long story short, following a, a long session of brainstorming, we landed on, actually former mayor uh, Anna Peterson suggested that the current amphitheater in Riverfront Park uh, is inadequate to serve even the current uses. Uh, and while it had been kind of a dark corner of the park uh, with the Peter Courtney Minto Island Bridge going in, it was the center of the park. Right. And so uh, we decided to really do a fantastic amphitheater in the center of our park system that could really host and accommodate the community. And that million dollar project uh, grew to a $4 million uh, project. That's just, uh, of course, on Rotary's volunteer and, and fundraising end of things. It's also been a fantastic public-private partnership mm -hmm. with the city and uh, all that the city has done in partnership with that. We've done this before with Rotary. Why don't you give us quick, a quick uh, survey of uh, Riverfront or other parks where the Rotary has come into play? Well, in Riverfront Park, we have uh, already the uh, Rotary Pavilion mm -hmm. at the north end of Riverfront Park, which was built... Um, I want to say around 2005 okay. uh, for in, in celebration of the centennial of Rotary International. Uh, Rotary exists all around the world and uh, came here to Salem in 1920, but in 1905 uh, Rotary International started and we built the Rotary Pavilion in celebration of Rotary International's centennial. And then the uh, playground in Riverfront Park isn't always referred to th this way, but it's the Rotary Children's Playground. Right. When, Ro Ro when Riverfront Park uh, came to be, uh, the Rotary clubs around Salem collectively uh, decided to put in the Rotary Children's Playground in Riverfront Park. Uh, is, because the park theme, is this a common uh, Rotary project nationally, or is it just something that has happened here because there's been such an interesting opportunity. What, what prompts this from Rotary? I don't, I don't know that it's a common one, but I was just up in Bellevue the other day, and there's a large playground, children's playground, that was the Rotary, Rotary Club of Bellevue that built that. Ah. And it looks a lot like ours, just a little bit bigger. <laughs> uh, so I, I, I'm guessing that there are, are a lot of Rotary projects that are, there are civic projects. Yeah. The, 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 there's one over in Driggs, Idaho that was a, a small amphitheater. For that, folks who are unfamiliar with Rotary, what a quick two sentence, three sentence, whatever it takes, <laughs> description of what uh, Rotary is here in Salem, or well, nationally, internationally. Uh, yeah, it's, it's, it's a service organization that, that, that tries to improve communities, it brings people together, it brings together the resources of, of the community uh, to, to, to do good in the community. And it's not just here domestically, but it's abroad as well. 
uh, and Rotary's been involved in lots and lots of international projects, the eradication of polio. We work in education, clean water, maternal health, a variety of things. One of the, uh, there are two questions really about that project that I run into. Number one, what is it? What, what, what is that? And where did that idea come from? I was talking to a young um, architectural student, mm -hmm. uh, actually a Marshallese uh, architectural student, interesting. really interested in it the other day. I was down, down at the park and uh, was real taken with the really vague description I could give uh, without expertise. Um, but what, uh, what, what is it and when is it open? is probably the biggest, <laughs> when do we get to start using that? Or when can I walk up to it and get underneath yeah. and see what happened there? That's uh, can you kind of take me through the, the architectural, what is that? Well, <clears throat> the, the, the idea actually was generated when one of the architects from CB2, architects here in Salem, <clears throat> when we had asked for ideas around an amphitheater, they went out to the Grand Ronde uh, Cultural Center and, and they were looking for inspiration because that site was once a, a living site and a gathering site for the Kalapuya. Okay. Native Americans had lived here for hundreds, if not thousands of years. And they saw, this architect saw a small basket, an open weave basket that was used for collecting oh, nuts and shellfish and things where water could pour through and wash out the, the contents. And he liked this notion of this open weave basket that almost had a geometric pattern to it. Right. And that inspired this overall roof design oh, okay. of a Calapuya basket. And then it morphed and changed and became architecturally uh, viable you know, to, to actually build. Well, let, that's, me, that's let me ask you, uh, before we get to when's it open, <laughs> is my recollection, because I've been on site with you a couple of yeah. times and, and have had uh, some information. The different pieces are, do I understand they're all different? I mean, I'm still trying to think about how that got mm. designed and how it got built <clears throat> by Dalkey Construction. What, what is the, the story there in terms of the complexity of that building? Well, it, it, uh, we've heard from every contractor that yeah. has come through and every subcontractor and every material provider We've never done anything like this before. So this is truly one of a kind. Mm -hmm. And, and the, uh, the, there were some who, who wanted to make it simpler, who, who wanted to make it more symmetrical. Mm -hmm. uh, straight lines. Yeah, <laughs> straight, yeah, straight lines. Those are easier to build. That's right. But That's right. Uh, it, it, it truly is one of a kind and, and organic in its shape. And, and that's in part paying homage to the setting mm -hmm. uh, in which it, it, it sits. But the glue lamb beams, yeah. uh, the perimeter beams. They're a laminate, a wood laminate. They're right? a wood laminate, yeah. correct. Mm -hmm. uh, Pacific yellow cedar is, is the material from here in the northwest. <clears throat> and the, those beams, uh, yes, the perimeter beams are, are largely one piece. There, there are some connections that uh, are largely hidden, and, and so it's made to look as though it's one piece. Mm -hmm. But the weave, the interior weave, uh, the, there are structural members that go from front to back that are one piece. Uh, but then that weave pattern is all individual pieces that go between those structural members and they serve to strengthen the overall structure. Uh -huh. And uh, Dylan Chavez, the, the architect at CB2 with whom we've been working most, uh, describes very well the, the, the intricacy of the structure and how uh, each piece is a member of the community, and each piece uh, signifies that, that, that it is important to that overall structure. So um, it, it, it's not that they're individual pieces, yes, but it also holds it all together. Oh, that's uh, great. Very much like our community. But each of those pieces, there are what, 296? Actually, I was thinking about 360 <laughs> some individual members. <clears throat> that that are individually cut. Individually cut with, with <clears throat> multiple angles and cuts, and it's, it was all done with computerized saws. It's, it's a, remarkable. I, I mean, it really is. I think, I'm hoping some, that, that there will be uh, docents or some yeah. setup yeah. to explain to people what happened there, because I, I was lucky enough to have that explained to me, and I'm still kind of processing how yeah. do you cut 360 pieces, put them in a row, line them up, nail them together, and have it come out in this beautiful structure. Yeah. So, yeah. when? 
when? <laughs> this, this, this fall. This How's fall. that? Late it's, summer. Sometimes late summer, early fall. There are a lot of multiple, lots of moving pieces. There's, it's still not done. Completed. I mean, there's still right. pieces, con concrete, lighting. Uh, this is going to be a professional stage. There's landscaping. Mm -hmm. Uh, we are, though, going to be dedicating it uh, to Mr. Frank, uh, uh, Jer Jerry Frank, which I think begs the question. Uh, and, and for people who don't know Jerry, yeah. this, will, this will make sense. To people who know Jerry, they'll be going, what is he talking about? Why Jerry Frank? Yeah, well, Jerry's a, a legend in our community, yeah. of course. But for those who, who know, might know him only as the chocolate cake guy, <laughs> yeah. uh, he... Um, he, he's been a member of the Rotary Club of Salem for over 65 years. Badge number one, right? Badge, Badge number, number one. Yeah, yeah. Longest, exactly. Longest running member. A, and uh, following his <laughs> career, uh, having started and managed the, his family's Byron Frank store here in Salem, uh, he of course served as uh, chief of staff to Senator Mark Hatfield for uh, what two decades or, or At more. Least. Uh, part yeah. of that, uh, very generously in service to Oregonians for a dollar a year. Yeah. Uh, the dollar a year guy. and, and hey, Navy veteran. I mean, mm -hmm. uh, Jerry's got a really storied life. It's really quite a, yeah. Yeah. And, and, and his service, both uh, earning the moniker Oregon's third senator, <laughs> to earning the title uh, Oregon's premier <laughs> citizen yeah. uh, from the, the state legislature, there's probably not, whether they know it or not, a single person in the state of Oregon who hasn't been touched in some way by Jerry's generosity yeah. and his service to Oregonians. Yeah, it, it certainly, uh, I, I've known Mr. Frank for many years, uh, sort of casually, usually through Mark Hatfield's office, but uh, uh, a remarkable, remarkable person. Mm -hmm. uh, yeah. He has a, a memory for names that some, sometimes just stuns you. That, uh, uh, but it just uh, we're very excited uh, having this name for Jerry here in uh, here in Salem, uh, the town he has been such a tremendous benefactor to. Um, what uh, ultimately do you expect the amphitheater to be used for? Well, what do you, what do you expect? I mean, is this going to be the <laughs> symphony? Is this going to be plays? What are we? What do we got going it's on? It's going to be that and a whole lot that more. That and everything else. I, I think if any if anybody looks at the amphitheater and says, "Well, it's just going to be for live music performances," they've just scratched the surface okay. of what it's going to be used for. I think the opportunities are absolutely endless, Chuck. Really. Yeah. It, it, all the way from symphonies to stage plays to Shakespeare in the park to movies in the park to a family reunion to a school concert to. Uh, golly, a, a, a car show—the biggest show. wedding you've a ever car, seen. It, it, it could be—it could be a great wedding. It could be a family yeah. reunion. It's a place to propose marriage. It's yeah. a place for friends to get together for uh, for for uh, for an event or for a candlelight dinner or for the convention center to have a a, 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 yeah. a corporate event. If yeah. they've got somebody there in meetings at a conference all day over there, come over and have a nice candlelight dinner with some music in the summertime. I mean, it could be a very sweet place for lots of of events. The fact is, we don't have a covered outdoor, outdoor venue in Salem. So all those things that could have happened there haven't really been conceived yet. Right. Now this opens an opportunity that just didn't exist. Well, and we're now a city of 170,000 people. We're kind of on the map yeah. uh, between uh, on the west coast of possible venues for a variety sure. of things. So. Uh, I think it's going to be very exciting. I know Travel Salem is very excited about having it here. It's going to be uh, just another one of the uh, venues we have, uh, along with the convention center and the Bush Park. And I mean, you know, you look around at the kind of things. I don't think anyone would have thought when Bush Park was crew was uh, d donated and essentially created, it would be the site of one of the biggest art shows yeah. in the in the country, you know, so what, this is, I think, going to have the same kind of effect. I'm really excited. So uh, do you know how this will be programmed? Uh, this is through the city, isn't it? This will be a city. Are you donating it to the city mm -hmm. or how does that work? Yep. Well, yeah, thank the, you. <laughs> <laughs> you're very welcome. Great. I want to get that right. No, yeah. I, it it, it no, being Riverfront Park, right. it, it's the city's property and, okay. and Rotary has uh, uh, I don't want to get into technicalities, but, but Rotary's building it and, and really building it for the community. This isn't something that Rotary's building for Rotary, uh, but part of our process was going to the community, going to all the neighborhood associations to get input and feedback yeah. from the community for their amphitheater. 
Well, and you must have found a lot of excitement. That must have been a lot of fun. There was, an, and, and there really was a, a, a deep consensus that it was a good idea. We listened right. hard. We listened to maybe 54, 55 different groups that we met with to say, here's some ideas, what do you think? We listened to ideas and built, and it really did morph and build and got better and better. The more people mm -hmm. we listened to, the better the idea the got. The better it got. Absolutely. Oh, that's fantastic. Well, I, I think we're all just immensely proud that it's going to be in our community, uh, that it's going to be part of a, of, a, of a section of Riverfront Park that has become just sort of unbelievable. Mm -hmm. <laughs> I mean, you've got the carousel this, the old amphitheater, the Peter Courtney Bridge. Uh, we're going to be, I hope, in the next uh, uh, couple of years, uh, revamping the Echo Earth uh, Ball. Mm -hmm. uh, that uh, this is this is really so. It's a kind of a crossroads in this community down there, and I hope it'll be a crossroads uh, beyond our community that'll serve it uh, for years to come. Uh, yeah. I'm, really, I hope you guys will be really proud of yourselves that uh, this came Thanks. off. You raised raised a lot of money and did a lot of work getting this uh, the, getting this to move forward. So congratulations. And, uh, thank you. And I also want to say that the city has been an extraordinarily strong partner to work with. Good. I mean, and this kind of a project had a lot of complexities and it worked along the way, but, but people that we worked with in the city were good problem solvers and we're, we're always looking for sort of the, the end goal. And it's, it's been a good partnership all the way from city council through you, uh, Steve Powers, the city manager, uh, the departments. It's, it's been a good Great. working relationship and we've appreciated that. Great. Well, we were sure excited. So thank you very much for joining me. Uh, is there anything else that I should be uh, letting folks know or you should be letting folks know? You have an opportunity to... It, well, thank you. And, and uh, I, I'm just excited that this is, is taking shape and it's going to really change the skyline with oh, the yeah. Peter Courtney Ar Middle mm -hmm. Island Bridge and the Jerry Frank Salem Rotary Amphitheater. Uh, the, the skyline of Salem and, and people passing by and those postcards and aerial shots mm -hmm. will have people going... Wow. Yeah, yeah. It, it just gets better here. That's still be my theory. I know there's folks worry all the time about where are we going, what are we doing. Well, watch. Just stay tuned because yeah. it just gets better. Mm -hmm. And this is one of the really great examples. So thank you again very much on behalf yeah. of the community. Thank you, Chuck. And thank you for joining us.